you zoom in, then you're the only one shocks and you talking to yourself. Everyone else can see. So then we are going to apply De Morgan's law. So we're going to get it as um, negation of R, right? Or negation of Q and negation of R. So I'm going to do two things at the same time, but actually it's equivalent to doing two steps, but because I thought maybe that little taco not enough space, but I think I can just scroll up. I'll capture this and then send to y'all. So then we have negation of Q and negation of R implies negation of P. So remember, there's one internal parenthesis. We did another one, so there's two. The last square bracket, we don't need to because we already opened it using the De Morgan's law. So this is our first De Morgan's law. It did, so then you know what you're actually using. Sir, sorry to interrupt. The next thing to do is, we see that because we're following precedence, that means you're starting from left to right. So yeah. as we go along from the left hand side to the right hand side, we see what we're supposed to do first, right? So now we so see here, right? negation. That is for that whole expression there. So again, we're going to apply De Morgan's a second time. So we're going to get negation of R. Or now in this case, we do not open. Do we open or we do not open the parenthesis? So, if you want to leave it in oh and with it, it's fine. But if it's using the same operator, then we know that associative law says P or Q or R, same as doing P, R or Q first, right? P or R first or Q then. So from here, I can tell that it's going to be negation of Q or negation of R implies negation of P. And then this is De Morgan's second time. So then we're going to see for the case of the next parenthesis, right? We have it as negation of Q. Um, sorry, I forgot to put that in, isn't it? Um, the negation is here. So always remember, once you take the negation and you plug it in, the operator sign changes. So earlier it was an and, now it becomes an or. And then there is another negation there. Let me erase it. Somebody wants to write something, is it? I can't hear you. Tell me probably I can write. I attempted this with my students in uh, my class and what I got was students just scribbling all over so is there a mistake or what in the thing sir you can't hear us right yes rahul what's the problem sir you what can't hear us i did sir audio problem ah all right can you all hear me? Yes, we can hear. I use my phone. La. I realize that using phone, the call quality, the audio quality is much better. So I just, uh, let me disable the one on my laptop first. All right. Is it clearer now? Can you hear? Yes, we can hear. Yes, I can also hear you. I don't know why I couldn't hear you. So, okay, sir. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just now when you use the De Morgan's law in introducing that uh, negation into the whole proposition, mm -hmm. shouldn't that all symbol change to n? Where? Oh yes. On. Thank you. Yeah, I I overlooked that one there. And we saw the one internally. Yes, this should also change. Thank you. To um, an end. So it's negation of R and negation of whatever that's inside there. Then you have negation of R and negation of Q, right? 
or negation of. Then the final parenthesis, negation of R implies negation of P. Right? And then from here, we still have, so this was using our De Morgan's law. So we're going to apply it for the third time. So one way um, I uh, it's acceptable if you think that you can do it quickly by applying De Morgan's law three times. Some books, they tend to cut short their working by doing that, right? Doing each, applying each law, um, if conveniently to at the same time simultaneously, right? So if you do that, it's acceptable to say that, okay, fine, I already know that I've done so much, I'm a pro at, you know, logical equivalences. So negation of R and negation of Q or negation of negation of R implies negation of negation of P, right? So now from here, it's going to get a bit tricky, but you see why it's actually faster to do this. It's just that I'm writing slow. I'm just going to rewrite it so it's clearer now. So negation of R and we still have the parenthesis there. So we have the negation of Q, right? And then it's or negation of negation of R implies negation of P. So now what happens here is um, we have one more to close. So this is De Morgan's. So now if you notice that for this part here, right, you're going to get again De Morgan's law negation of negation of R implies negation of P. True or not? Can you do that? Here you cannot apply the De Morgan's first. Huh? De Morgan only works for either and uh, operator or the or operator. The disjunction and conjunction operators only. It cannot be applied directly to any other operator. So I've seen that also as students have made such mistakes, right? They see like, oh, so the way they, I don't know how they could change the negation. So yeah, don't do that. We have to change the implication to either disjunction or conjunction, right? So for the third working, this is going to be negation of R and a negation of Q. Or So what's inside? We leave the, that one out first we, because we haven't applied it yet. So we have all negation of inside. We remember P implies Q is logically equivalent to P or negation of Q. True or not? Isn't it not P? Should be negative P, sir. Negative yes. P, right? Yeah, that's why I asked you to confirm. I can't remember. I myself sometimes confuses myself. So then, so this is, oops, it's a pen. I'm looking for so p implies q it's always in the form of negation of p or q so another thing if you don't do enough exercises when you see the format p implies q is the same as negation of p or q and you see that oh negation of r implies negation of p how am i going to do that how am i going to are we, am i supposed to factorize it or what no right Remember, like what I said, always think of it like a big X or a big Y, right? Or a big P or a big Q. That way, what you're going to see eventually for this case is just P implies Q, right? So it's still going to be negation of R or the negation of negation of R or Q. In this case, Q is negation of p right so helping i mean it helps to basically use um you know representation simpler forms so you don't confuse yourself right only if you're encountering problems or else um you have to do it slowly like, one by one then you don't get yourself confused so eventually what we get is i'm just going to leave all the earlier part which is having to rewrite uh so i save time 
you, you should know how to do that part here. So all dot 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 dot. All right. We have an or negation. So we have negation of P or Q. So we're gonna get negation of negation of P, right? Or Q. In this case, it's going to be negation of P, right? So then from here we are going to apply the double negation. So this part here we applied what law? So De Morgan was used twice already. For the third step, we applied logical equivalences. That's the term for it, logical equivalence. For so maybe Q. Um, what do you mean Q? Oh, sorry, this is R. Huh? This one is wrong here. It should be an R because inside there is an R. It's negation of R implies negation of P. So it should be negation, negation of R or negation of P. So this, I don't want they didn't give you a special name. Everything is logical equivalences, but this is just called logical uh, equivalences used for implication or using implication, right? I'll uh, just call it as logical equivalences for implication. Such a long name rather than some person calling it like, yay, I found a way to get the answer. So anyway, then we can use uh, two things at the same time, right? Because it's only going to be occurring once, which is a double negation. So I'm going to apply both double negation and De Morgan at the same time. Because normally, you will encounter such cases. Within the parentheses, you have only two variables. There's an and or there's an or there. Right? One of it may have a negation sign. So we know that De Morgan can only be used when you have a negation outside the parentheses. So you're going to get the case where something is going to be Negation, negation. So rather than waste time to do one more step and right, you can still away, just say using um D Morgan's law and double negation. What you're gonna get now is dot 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 or double negation in this case is inside and outside. So this is negation, negation, negation. So you're still gonna get negation of R and P. Or else you have to write it for you have to do double negation first for the R first, and then you have to do the double negation once you apply the De Morgan's law to the negation of P. So you see, there'll be the too many steps. So this ways to like, um, if you know how to do it, lah, you can skillfully do it. So then from here, it's going to be straightforward because you already have a negation of R and P. So you just to put in the earlier form that I left out just quickly. So I didn't waste time writing it. Now I have to rewrite it. So now we have a negation of R and negation of Q or negation of R and P. So here we will encounter a problem. Because why? To remove the subsequent parentheses, you're going to just, just give individual variables or the operands. So it doesn't make sense you're going to get stuck and it's usually how students get stuck they will just oh okay fine i mind i'll just use distributive law because this is a all outside this is an n inside and then you expand it and then oh how now can i rearrange so be careful when you see something like this right what you do is then it will be safer to do what rather than apply the negation of q to that one that's inside here, would it be wiser to apply the negation R outside to this fella here and then this one here? What do you all think? So the way that you're going to do it, because like I said, as long as the precedence is maintained, the truth value eventually is the same. It's re still retained. You can do the negation of R first, right? Or you want to say like, I'm going to do traditional way and just do what is supposed to be done for the parenthesis first, then go ahead and do it. But you're going to do with the parenthesis, you're going to get negation of Q being applied to negation of R and P. So eventually you're going to get six, so you're going to get six, different 
pairs of operands in there. Because when, then when you apply the negation of R. Now it looks fine with just negation of R and negation of Q, right? Uh, because this is an M, now this one becomes still an OR here, right? Then for this big fella there, can you see out the writing below already? I'm in the bottom of the screen. It looks like you all can see. So instead of doing the one inside, I'm just going to re um, apply the one that's outside because it means there are fewer terms that I'll be looking at. Negation of Q, right? The, because we are applying uh, the distributive law, so the sign doesn't change. And then here we are going to get negation of R, and then there's that AND, and then it's going to be negation of R, right, and P. So here, you see now, I only have two terms. One is bigger than the other. Compared to having six terms and then having to rearrange them again by applying don't or whatever. So from here, we see that it's looking good because we have the case of negation of R and negation of R and P. If we go back, there's one order, isn't it? When you have P or P or Q, and there's another one for P and P and Q. Yeah, I think it was a domination or even pattern or something like I remember. What was it? Right? So when you apply that, because that is in this form here, because they are the same sign. When they are the same operator, then um, we can simplify it. So you see, I managed to, we are able to cut down by rather than having to do extra steps later on by expanding it further. Understand? So that's the whole idea. Um, why I'm telling you this bit. Oh, it's already passed. It's already 610. But yes, um, I'm going to tell you that so you all can understand that bit there. So, oh, I lost that. So on this part here, we know that we apply the logical equivalences and then um, for to get it this one and then inside here, what did we apply? We, uh, we apply the uh, distributive law to get the next step. So always remember to write it down, distributive law. And then from here, what is that law? I forgot that the number there. Let me just quickly check. Mm. Associative. Mm -hmm. Is it associated? No, when you have P Absorption. and P and R. Sorry? Absorption. Is it? Ah, absorption law. Yes, exactly correct. You're right. Yes, it's the absorption law. So eventually everything becomes P, isn't it? When they are the same operator, yes, I mean, it's the same operator, um, the absorption law will eventually say that either P or Q, do, 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 do. Hey, where is this thing? I got it, yeah. So this is a... So wait, absorption law has to be different sign. This is the same sign. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can <laughs> use the absorption law, right? Um, the process is uh, associative. Oh? But uh, that requires all three different propositions. Yeah. So um, P has to be same as P. Cannot change. I thought I remember it as being uh, the same sign. In this case, we can just rearrange it. Lah. Right, the associative law. You're right. It's the associative law because we just want to rearrange it without having to use the distributive law for that. Because P and Q and R is the same as P and Q and R or PR or whatever. First. So here then, it's still much faster. You can negation of R and negation of Q. Or because the signs are the same, the same operator you're using, I'm going to rearrange it now to become negation of R and negation of R and P. So from here, we know that Negation of R and negation of R, what do we get? False. Another negation of uh, R. Another negation of R. So you're going to get false and true if you, you are referring to the original R. Right? So no matter what's the, the value of the original R, 
you'll still get back as negation of r. So we managed to simplify it now to negation of r and negation of q on one side, and then we have all, we have negation of r and p, right? Then what we get is uh, so I forgot to write what was this one here. This was associative law. Associative law. And then eventually we see that what is this? This is just your reverse of your distributive law, isn't it? And that will give us the solution to the question because here it says that negation of R and P or negation of Q. So this will definitely be in the form of negation of R and P or negation of R you know, or should be and oh yeah correct so negation of R and negation of Q. Right? So you see something like that? Remember on the right hand side you, if your working is something like that, then automatically you know you have found the last step. So, which is similar to here, isn't it? Negation of R and Q or negation of R and P. So, we can then use the, we don't call it reverse, I'm just saying reverse because usually we read it from left to right. We're just going to apply the distributive law. Reverse. Yeah, the reverse distributive law. So this is distributive law applied reversely or uh, reverse distributive law, reverse blah, blah, blah. And then we manage to factorize it. So we have negation of R and we got negation of Q or uh, P. Did I get it right? Yeah, just they put it as a P. Sir, so in the exam, uh, how should we write that last thing? Distributive? Uh, yes, you can just call it distributive. Uh, because we know that it is, you're just reading it from right to left rather than left to right, like how we normally do it. I'm going to put it as reverse distributive. I've seen some books, when they give it that solution like that, they do explain it as applying it reversely. Lah, right? So, yes, yeah, so it's the same thing. Because... Um, you don't want you to write so much. There's really so much working. You don't want you to have to like write one whole essay just to solve a question like this. So you see, like, um, this is all almost like uh, 20 minutes, right? 20 to 25 minutes, slightly longer. And the other, but you notice that um, it's actually not that too difficult. But how I did this is because, like I said, I've been doing so many exercises, so I really know how and how, how to look for that form. Of this. That is why from here I already knew that okay, fine, this is how we did it. So at least you can only know that if you're going to use or you're gonna do a lot of exercises. Or else, you know, when you are going to do it on the actual day, let's say the exam, that there, there is there is like you would have done it probably like expanding the negation of R and this part here. Instead of trying to simplify it, you would have just gone and expanded sorry, this part here. Right? Q and R, Q or R and Q or P, and then you have six terms. So then having to rearrange a second time, a third time, and then getting back to four terms like this. I mean, two terms, but with just four variables, right? And then knowing that if you factorize it, it's going to end up being just three variables, just like on the right hand side. Right? So it's always a case of us expanding and then simplified or expanding and then factorizing, right? So then always remember we use the reverse um, distributive law to get the final answer. Don't leave it there like that. In mathematics, you always say thus proven true, right? It is a long sentence, but you can just put it short form as thus proven true. The logical equivalence. In its proper formal way, we normally write it as thus proven true that the logical expression 
on the left, blah, 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 all this is logically equivalent to the one on the right. Hence, it's valid, right? So, because the question is very simple, proof. So, a proof method must always end with you telling whether is it valid or not, right? The question, understand? Even though it's always going to ask you proof, true, proof, true, right? So this one is always one extra mark. I mean, part of the working. So it's not always an uh, even number for your steps because, you know, there's one for giving the equation, the expression, and one for the law. I always The question is always an uh, odd number because I always give one mark for you to end your proving like that. Some of you put as, uh, if, you, if you know, some use QED. I'm not a mathematician. I was not mathematically trained. I know mathematicians like to use that. It's possible. The original slides, actually, whenever they had a proof, uh, example where they did proving, uh, they always used the QED. I already removed it. <laughs> but I think it's still there in the original slides. You still get down. All right. So thank you very much. So this is um, this part where, um, yeah, it looks like a lot, but actually just my writing. She used proper like, lines, so I didn't run away from writing it. So you see there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is 15, uh, this is 15 marks. Huh? If earlier case was with the two table, how many rows I already said? There was that five, six rows plus the three for the standard one. So there is nine marks. Mm. So you can see a lot more difference in the marks for that. So. We don't should know la, what question will be more popular to be asked, a true table or logical equivalent. So with that, thank you very much. Um, is there anything else you'd like to know regarding proof? I mean, uh, regarding... Uh, the, hmm. uh, yes? the textbook for Ken Math Rosen textbook, right? Um, yes. I, I want to ask, so there will not be any assignments given to us today, right? Because I realize there is a part that says, uh, no assignments available. We just use it to read the textbook and do questions only, right? Yes, we are not Whenever using. We um, yeah, we're not using the uh, online uh, resources materials because I. Uh, in the beginning, uh, when they first decided to sell the license, they had a campus license, so we could integrate it into ELIP. Um, I was using it already before they came in and then they split up my, uh, my, uh, my login ID. So I can't use it anymore in the sense that I do so many things. I don't want to do that. So yeah, yeah. I'm not we are not integrating the, 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 the Kenneth Rosen's exercises and all that in our um, course. Okay, thank you. Mm. Sir. You're welcome. So you can do all the assignments and, all. and also notice the one time I actually gave the assignment and uh, students could actually answer it exactly the same as my answer scheme. So I realized that the assignment somehow students could also see the solution to it. I don't know why. So yeah, I stopped. So I stopped referring to their online uh, materials for assignments and all that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Welcome. If nothing else, thank you very much. Uh, 